Dorothy was a little girl who lived with her uncle and aunt on a farm in Kansas. Smack in the middle of the United States. She had spent all her life on the farm, but sometimes she'd think of all the wonderful faraway places she'd never seen. And she would wish that she could fly high, high into the sky, like the little bluebird that nested in her uncle's barn. And she would hold her little dog Toto in her arms and sing. Somewhere over the rainbow, way I, there's a land that I heard of once in a chimney tops that's where you'll find me somewhere over the rainbow bluebirds fly birds fly over the rainbow why then oh why can't I One day, when Dorothy and Toto were all alone in the farmhouse, her wish came true, for a great cyclone swept across the prairie and lifted the house right off the ground. Higher and higher across the sky, the wind carried the little house until finally, after a long time, the house came down and landed, bump. Dorothy and Toto found themselves in a strange land called the Land of Oz, filled with many strange creatures. Some of these creatures were very mean and spiteful, like the Wicked Witch of the East and the Wicked Witch of the West. But most of them were funny and friendly and kind. The very best friends that Dorothy and Toto found were the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman and the Cowardly Lion. Now Dorothy was told that the only man wise enough to get her back home was the wonderful Wizard of Oz. So she set off to find him with her three strange friends, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the poor cowardly lion. Off they all went, down the yellow brick road, singing. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. We hear he is a whiz of a whiz, if ever a whiz there was. If ever, oh, ever a whiz there was, the wizard of Oz is one because. Because, 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 because. Because of the wonderful things he does. <laughs> We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. <laughs> Dorothy and Toto and their three friends finally came to the Emerald City of Oz. Everything was green, the streets, the houses, even the people who were singing this happy song. Ah, 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 oh, 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 and a couple of tra-la-las. That's how we laugh a day away in the merry old land of Oz. There's a garden spot, I'm told, where it's never too hot and it's never too cold, where you're never too young and you're never too old, where you're never too thin or tall, and you're never, never, never too, too, too anything at all. Oh, you're not too mad, and you're not too sane, and you don't compare, and you don't complain. All you do is just sit tight, cause it's all so, so, so downright right. Ha, 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 ho, 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 and a couple of tra-la-las. That's how we laugh the day away in the merry old land of Oz. Buzz, 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 chirp, 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 and a couple of la di -dahs. That's how the crickets crick all day in the merry old land of Oz. We get up at twelve and start to work at one. Take it off for lunch and then at two we're done. Jolly good fun. 
fun. Ha, 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 ho, 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 and a couple of tra-la-las. That's how we laugh the day away in the merry old land of Oz. Ha, 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 ho, 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 in the merry old land of Oz. One by one, Dorothy and her friends were allowed to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz and to ask him for the things they wanted. Oz listened carefully to them all and promised that he would give them what they asked if they would destroy the Wicked Witch of the West. Get rid of the witch, said the Wizard of Oz, and I will give brains to the Scarecrow, a heart to the Tin Woodman, courage to the Cowardly Lion, and I will see that Dorothy gets back to Kansas. Well, it wasn't an easy task to destroy that mean old witch, but Dorothy and her friends finally managed to do it. You see, the witch was made of brown sugar, and Dorothy threw a pail of water on her, and the witch just melted away. The people of Oz were very happy when that happened, for now that wicked witch could never be cruel to them again. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Witch, old witch. The wicked witch. Ding dong, the wicked witch is dead. Wake up, you sleepy head. Rub your eyes, get out of bed. Wake up, the wicked witch is dead. She's gone where the goblins go below, below, below your home. Let's open up and sing and ring the bells out. Ding dong, the merry old. Sing it high, sing it low. Let them know the wicked witch is The wizard kept his promise, and Dorothy and her friends all got their rewards. The scarecrow got his brains, the woodman got his heart, and the lion became so brave that he was made king of all the beasts. And with the help of a pair of magic silver shoes, Dorothy was able to fly all the way back to Kansas with little Toto in her arms. Somewhere over the rainbow skies are blue. And the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Dreams really do come true. This is the story of The Pokey Little Puppy by Jeanette Sebring Lowry. Five little puppies dug a hole under the fence and went for a walk in the wide, wide world. <coughs> Through the meadow they went, down the road, over the bridge, <coughs> across the green grass, and up the hill, one after the other. <coughs> and when they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves. One, <coughs> two, Three, four, one little puppy wasn't there. Now, where in the world is that pokey little puppy, they wondered. For he certainly wasn't on top of the hill. He wasn't going down the other side. The only thing they could see going down was a fuzzy caterpillar. He wasn't coming up this side. The only thing they could see coming up was a quick green lizard. But when they looked down at the grassy place near the bottom of the hill, there he was, running round and round, his nose to the ground. What is he doing? The four little puppies asked one another. And down they went to see, roly-poly, pell-mell, tumble-bumble, till they came to the green grass. And there they stopped short. What in the world are you doing? They asked, said the pokey little puppy. Then the four little puppies began to sniff. And they smelled it too. Rice pudding, they said. 
And home they went as fast as they could go over the bridge, up the road, through the meadow, and under the fence. And there, sure enough, was dinner waiting for them with rice pudding for dessert. But their mother was greatly displeased. So you are the little puppies who dig holes under fences, she said. No rice pudding tonight. And she made them go straight to bed. <coughs> But the pokey little puppy came home after everyone was sound asleep. He ate up the rice pudding and crawled into bed as happy as a lark. The next morning, someone had filled the hole and put up a sign. The sign said, Don't ever dig holes under this fence. But the five little puppies dug a hole under the fence just the same and went for a walk in the wide, wide world. Through the meadow they went, down the road, over the bridge, across the green grass, and up the hill, two and two. And when they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves. One, two, three, four. One little puppy wasn't there. Now, where in the world is that pokey little puppy, they wondered. For he certainly wasn't on top of the hill. He wasn't going down the other side. The only thing they could see going down was a big black spider. He wasn't coming up this side. The only thing they could see coming up was a brown hop toad. But when they looked down at the grassy place near the bottom of the hill, there was the pokey little puppy sitting still as a stone with his head on one side and his ears cocked up. What is he doing? The four little puppies asked one another. And down they went to see with Bumble till so they came to the green grass, and there they stopped short. What in the world are you doing? they asked. I hear something, said the pokey little puppy. The four little puppies listened, and they could hear it too. Chocolate custard, they cried. Someone is spooning it into our bowls. And home they went as fast as they could go, over the bridge, up the road, through the meadow, and under the fence, and there... Sure enough, was dinner waiting for them with chocolate custard for dessert. But their mother was greatly displeased. So you're the little puppies who will dig holes under fences, she said. No chocolate custard tonight. And she made them go straight to bed. But the pokey little puppy came home after everyone else was sound asleep, and he ate up all the chocolate custard and crawled into bed as happy as a lark. The next morning, someone had filled the hole and put up a sign. The sign said, Don't ever, ever dig holes under this fence. But in spite of that, the five little puppies dug a hole under the fence and went for a walk in the wide, wide world. Through the meadow they went, down the road, over the bridge, across the green grass, and up the hill, two and two. And when they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves. One, two, three, four. One little puppy wasn't there. Now, where in the world is that pokey little puppy, they wondered. For he certainly wasn't on top of the hill. He wasn't going down the other side. The only thing they could see going down was a little grass snake. He wasn't coming up this side. The only thing they could see coming up was a big grasshopper. But when they looked down at the grassy place near the bottom of the hill, there he was, looking hard at something on the ground in front of him. What is he doing? The four little puppies asked one another. And down they went to see. Roly poly, pell mell, tumble bumble, till they came to the green grass, and there they stopped short. What in the world are you doing? They asked. I see something, said the pokey little puppy. The four little puppies looked, and they could see it too. It was a ripe red strawberry growing there in the grass. Strawberry shortcake, they cried. And home they went as fast as they could go, over the bridge, up the road, through the meadow, and under the fence, and there, sure enough, was dinner waiting for them with strawberry shortcake for dessert. But their mother said, So you're the little puppies who dug that hole under the fence again. 
no strawberry shortcake for supper tonight, and she made them go straight to bed. But the four little puppies waited till they thought she was asleep, and then they slipped out and filled up the hole, and when they turned around, there was their mother watching them. What good little puppies, she said. Come, have some strawberry shortcake. And this time, when the pokey little puppy got home, he had to squeeze in through a wide place in the fence. And there were his four brothers and sisters licking the last crumbs from their saucer. Oh, dear me, said his mother. What a pity you're so pokey. Now the strawberry shortcake is all gone. So the pokey little puppy had to go to bed without a single bite of shortcake. And he felt very sorry for himself. And the next morning, someone had put up a sign that read, No desserts ever, unless puppies never dig holes under this fence again. Little fat policeman in the street Blows his silver whistle, tweet, tweet, tweet Some cars stop and some cars go When little fat policeman signals go Yo ho ho, yes siree Little fat policeman, please save me policeman all alone in his little roundhouse with his telephone ting ling ling rings in his ear little fat policeman's always near yo ho ho yes siree little fat policeman please save me fat policeman on the beach keeps his feet dry and eats his peach help 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 now don't you fear little fat policeman's always near yo ho ho yes siree little fat policeman please save me On the Bar H Ranch, the bravest was brave Cowboy Bill. He wore tight boots with heels that high and a ten-gallon hat that hit one eye. Brave Cowboy Bill, brave Cowboy Bill. Bill rode a pony he called Golden Arrow. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One day he saw some bad men who were stealing Bar H cattle. So he tightened up his stirrups so they wouldn't clink or rattle, and he rode with both guns ready to the valley where they were. Stick him up, he shouted loudly, and he added, don't you stir. All the bad men put their hands up and they all stood very still, cause no one ever argued with brave Cowboy Bill. Brave Cowboy Bill, brave Cowboy Bill. Bill took those desperate outlaws at a gallop side by side. All across the rolling prairie was a most exciting ride. Right to the office of the sheriff, who was twice as pleased as Punch. Oh, nice oh, work, oh. Bill! Oh. Then Bill rounded up wild horses till it was time for lunch. <laughs> Just as he finished lunch, Cowboy Bill heard lots of noise. Horns and drums and feet parading and a band of big cowboys. <laughs> rodeo, rodeo, they shouted. It's starting at the fairground, half past one. 
so Cowboy Bill rode out there with him. He was ready for some fun. Cowboy Bill won the pony races. He won the shooting thing, and then he won the prize for throwing wild bulls in the ring. Cowboy Bill won the prize for roping. And the wild horse riding prize. And the prize for doing rope tricks. All the cowboys blinked their eyes. And when the rodeo was almost over, Bill heard his mother say it was way past bedtime and he'd better hurry home right away. And Bill did. He galloped home, leaping from one horse to another. Cause though no one ever argued with brave Cowboy Bill, Cowboy Bill never argues with his mother.